Hi guys and welcome to episode two of the Prodigals podcast. I'm Steph. And I'm Esperance. And today we'll be talking about the topic of being born again. But before we get into that, I just want to do a little like a little thing in our first episode. Um, like we're not used to all these microphones <laughs> and the headphones and I sounded really quiet and I sounded like I was whispering and that's not how I talk at all. Um, so yeah. You'll, you'll notice that as episodes go on, but bear with us. We're just trying to get used to the whole thing, <laughs> um, which was just funny because when we reheard that, I realised I, I sounded like a mouse and that's not, that's not naturally me. So She doesn't really sound like that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a very loud person. Yeah, she is. Yeah. <laughs> I can testify to this, she is. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's jump straight into episode two and what it means to be born again. So what I do want to start off with is that there has been such a misuse and a misconception of the phrase born again. Mm. And there has been so many stereotypes and it's caused endless amount of confusion. Yeah. And I feel like there is such an importance to being born again. It is essential for the Christian life. Yeah. And to be honest with you, before I was born again, I had no knowledge of what it was to be born again. Like I thought it was a cult. Mm. I thought surely these people are crazy and they're brainwashed. And the sad thing was is that people would say be born again, but they never gave any context to it. They didn't educate what it actually meant to yeah. be born again. Yeah. So they never said what it means to be born again. Yeah. Why do you need to be born again? And what actually happens after you're born again? Yeah. And there has just been such a confusion around that whole topic, especially if you don't have the knowledge of God. Yeah. I remember when I, um, cause like here and there before I surrendered my life to Christ and before I became born again, I would read the scriptures and I would come over that verse, you know, where in John three, where Jesus is talking to Nicodemus about the new birth. And he says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I didn't have the knowledge of God, so I never really understood what it meant. And at that time, I had no desire to actually study what it meant. Yeah. And I never really heard of anyone mentioning being born again. I just remember people saying, you need to believe. And to be born again is to believe in Christ, but the word believe is actually more than what we think. Yeah. And what we know it as. Definitely. Yeah. It is. And, you know, there was so much confusion. Mm. Um when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Mm. Now, Nicodemus being a theologian and the teacher of Israel, he should have understood the metaphor that Jesus was speaking. Yeah. He should have understood that from the previous prophets and Moses. Yeah. Moses said in Deuteronomy that he will, that surely God needs to circumcise your heart. He also said in Ezekiel that, God will remove the dead heart, the heart Mm. of stone, and replace it with the heart of flesh. Mm. And yes, Jesus changed the metaphor to the delivery room, Mm. but it still has the same meaning. Unless the spirit of God is in you and working in you, then you will remain spiritually dead. And that's what Nicodemus didn't understand because he said to Jesus, what do you mean? Do I have to re-enter my mother's womb and be born again? Um, but the, the phrase of being born again is from a human spirit to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's a regeneration. And what regeneration is, it's a process of renewal and restoration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if we haven't received hold the Holy Spirit and allowed Christ into our hearts and not led by the Holy Spirit, you will not see the kingdom of God. Jesus makes this very clear. It's not us saying it. But it's Jesus who said it. Exactly. And there is such a significance. It is receiving yeah. the spirit of God. Mm. You know, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Yeah. And I remember be- before being born again, I was led by my human inclinations. Yes. And what is that? It's the desires of the flesh. Yep. We, we wanted to do, like I remember me, what I wanted to do my own goals, my own career, my own me, me, me. That's what it was about. And um, it's, how do you say it? It's like when when you receive Christ, it's not what you want. You want what he wants for you. You want to glorify him in all you do. You want his will to be done in your life. Exactly. And that's what it means to be born again and following Christ, being a disciple of Christ, being led by the spirit, picking up your cross daily and following him and believing in him. 
Now, if we look at the word believe, it means to entrust. So the Greek word for believe is like, look, if you're Greek and you're listening to this, <laughs> don't don't come for me, okay? But it's p- pistorio or something like that. Look, I'm not too sure. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's a verb. And we know that a verb is a doing word. It's an action word. And the word believe is to entrust. Yeah. Now, entrusting is putting your life in, in a protector's hands. And it's an action. So you're doing it every day. It's an everyday every day day. thing. Um, and you're putting your life into the hands of God, into Christ. You're surrendering it. And you're saying, what you want me to do for you, I will do it. Exactly. I will surrender. It's surrendering it to yeah. you. And it's, it's the hardest part is coming to the realization that you need to do that. Yeah. And by nature, we are so rebellious towards God. Yeah. And that's why in Ezekiel, it says that I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Mm. What he means by a heart of flesh is that we will be receptible to his word. Yeah. That we can submit to him, that we can surrender to him. Does, doesn't it also mean like a heart of flesh is um, like, like to be molded? Yeah. Like he will mold you and yeah. your heart. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's actually amazing because Jesus describes in Revelation 3.17 the pre-born again mind like this, right? Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know you are wretched, miserable, poor and blind and naked. And we don't realise that in our everyday life before we are born again. Mm. We think that we are complete, we are whole. And even though we are in that pre-born again mindset, Mm. there's always something missing. Yeah. It always felt like something was missing. And it's not until we acknowledge that we are what Jesus says we are in Revelation 3.17 that we can come into that knowledge of who we are Yeah, and that we will be ready to be born again. Yeah. You know, but that is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. In John 16 – it, it says that the Holy Spirit will come to convict the world of their sin, right? Yeah. What is the world's sin? Is that they don't know Jesus. Mm. So the Holy Spirit is drawing you near. The Holy Spirit is convicting you. That's right. And it's not until he convicts you of that sin, of not knowing Jesus, that you say to yourself, I need Jesus. Yeah. You know, how I came to the Lord, I was reading the Bible and – Every time I would read, the Holy Spirit was convicting me and he convicted the innermost depths of my heart, the darkness of my heart. Mm. And that's how I gave my life to Christ. And we have a decision to make when the Holy Spirit convicts, right? Yeah. We have a decision to turn to Christ or we have a decision to rebel and continue in our ways. Yeah. And a lot of people think like, um, why is Jesus necessary? Is it really necessary that I have to follow Jesus? If you want eternal life, yes, you know, but it's not just about that. It's about, um, it's about a relationship. It's about fellowship. And like you mentioned, we, no matter how much you think, you know, you before Christ, there's something always missing. Yeah. You know, and we, we search, I remember me, I would search for these things that were missing in different things. I I loved astrology. That was my biggest thing. Wow. I needed to know your birth time and everything, to know every single sign in your chart. Um, I was so heavy on astrology. And then I would go to Instagram for validation. If I didn't get a certain amount of likes, oh, I'm I'm not liked. If I I lost a follower, it was, what have I done wrong? Yeah. And I would seek for validation everywhere. And no matter how confident I seemed, there was always that something missing. And it wasn't until I surrendered, became born again, and gave myself to Christ and my life over to Christ that I realized my validation and my worth is in him because of what he did for me and the blood that was shed because of all the sin that I lived for 27 years of my life, his, his death ultimately paid for the remission of sin. Yeah. And that what we need to understand as being born again is in God's eyes, when you have accepted Christ, he has paid the debt. For your sin. In full. Because sin gives birth to death. Yeah. And we were on the path to damnation. And now that we have accepted Christ, God looks at us pure as snow. We are crystal clear in his eyes. And it's um, it's a regeneration. It's beautiful. Yeah. And we have the Holy Spirit in us, producing the fruit of the Spirit, mm. working in us, 
changing our character and it's a it's a it's a daily process yeah you know it's a matter of dying to your flesh and allowing the holy spirit to lead and it's hard yeah it is hard people think you know you come to christ and you have this perfect life it's it's really not it's it's not come to christ and you receive all these things it's you come to christ and you receive christ yeah that's what being born again is that's what it means to be a christian or a believer of christ um yeah it's to have the spirit of god yeah in you it's to be born from above yeah and that's what it means to be born again and i read a quote by john calvin mm. and it really it really stood out to me and it says nearly all wisdom we possess that is to say true and sound wisdom consists of two parts the knowledge of god and of ourselves and i was just sitting there and i was thinking about it and i was just really really wanted to understand it mm. And what I took from it is that we need to be reminded that it's not the knowledge of God that is difficult to understand. It's the knowledge of ourselves that's difficult to understand. Yeah. It is very difficult to understand. And when you do start to understand it, it's like confronting yourself, you know. And we need to understand that the depths of our condition are beyond comprehension without the spirit of God. Yeah. You know, like in Jeremiah, it says that, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Mm. And it's not until we have that full knowledge that nothing good stems from my heart. Yeah. That only the Holy Spirit reveals to me the inner depth and inner darkness of my heart Mm. that I can that I will cry out to the Lord because He is what I need. Yeah. And it that's like I was mentioning earlier that the realization of coming, um, coming to that realization is hard. Um, we, we think we're good people. I knew, I know me and you could probably agree that before Christ, we were like, we're good people. You know, we care for people. We'll do, we'll do nice things for people. Um, you know, we love people and whatever, but it's, it's much deeper than that. That's the surface. God looks at the depths of the heart. And if you've ever lied, um, cheated, gossiped, gossiped, you know, you, you have that hate or revenge in your heart for someone that has hurt you. You haven't forgiven. Yeah. All these things over time, they build up inside of your heart and it's deceitful. It's it's evil. These are all inclinations of the flesh. Yeah. And we don't know any better because that which is born of the flesh is flesh, flesh, right? Yeah. And that's why we don't know any better. We see it as, oh, I'm a good person because I do this and I do that. No, not no one is good. No one Not is one good. person except for Jesus Christ. Because in God's eyes, the level of good is the Ten Commandments. And who can uphold that? Not one. Only Jesus. Yeah. And that is why he became the perfect sacrifice for us. Um, and I know that it wasn't until the Holy Spirit started to convict me, like you, about my heart and how I realized I'm actually not a good person. Even though I'm nice to people... But I'm, I'm not a good person. I have lied. I have done some things in my past. But it wasn't until I accepted Christ that that was forgiven. And he reveals that to you. And he heals you from that too. He does. You know, it, it's at a point where if someone has hurt you really bad in your past and you come to Christ, the strength of being able to forgive that person is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You can't forgive that person on your own. You can think, yeah, I've forgiven them. Good luck to them. That's not forgiving. I've realized that if I have truly forgiven someone, I pray for them. I pray that they will come to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they are saved and that one day I will see them in heaven. And that's the end goal, right? Everyone's salvation. Yeah. That's the whole point of um, talking. Like I remember before I came to Christ and people would talk about Christ. They talk about Jesus. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, you love Jesus. That's great. Like, why do you always have to talk about him? Oh my gosh, I was the exact same. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. Like, awesome, but tone it down. You're a bit extreme. I yeah. can't do this. I don't want to have this conversation with you. I'm like, what <laughs> is this cult? You know? <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. Are these people brainwashed? What are wrong? <laughs> what is wrong with them? That's what I thought. And now that we're born again. All I want to do is talk about Jesus and it's because of that pure love that you feel when you surrender to him that you want people to feel that too because the world is – it's lost its love and it's lost the kindness 
And if you're in Christ, you have that supernatural love that we have freely been given that we should be giving to other people. Oh, yeah. It's a command. Yes. It's not an option for us to love people. It's a command for us to go out and show Christ-like love to people who don't know it. To unbelievers, to believers. And you know, the most amazing thing is that the Holy Spirit will help you to love them the way that Christ loved them. Yes. You know, before coming to Christ, love was... I didn't know how to love properly. Mm. I didn't know the meaning of love. Yep. I didn't know how to be loved. And now being in Christ and actually coming to him and having the full knowledge of Christ and knowing that I am so loved and it's like, Lord, okay, this person done wrong by me, but I need you, Holy Spirit, to help me forgive them. Yep. I need you, Holy Spirit, to help me love them like you love them. Yep. And it's amazing because he gives you that. He really does. Why is it so necessary to be born again? Like why can't we just try to be better or try to come to God in our own terms? In our own way. In our own way without being born again. Mm. We are dead in our trespasses and sins, right? And dead implies lifeless. It's not physically or morally lifeless. It's that we are dead in the sense that we cannot see or feel the glory of Christ. Mm. right Mm -hmm. in Ephesians Paul says we are walking and following the world we have passions of the flesh and carry out desires of the body and mind Mm. and I can say before coming to Christ I was walking in the flesh I was indulging in the flesh yep I was living my life how I wanted to live it and that's one reason why it is so important to be born again Mm -hmm. because you don't have a desire to live in your flesh anymore you actually hate it yeah You hate it. And it's not to say that we don't struggle with it every single day. It's a war. Your flesh wages war against your spirit. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. We're we're by nature. Our human nature is our flesh. Um, And we want to do what we want to do. We will go against God. You know, we think like, oh, how long am I going to have to wait for something? I've been waiting two years. You still want me to wait? Yeah. You know what? No, I'm going to go do it. In my own strength. Yeah. On my own timing. Yeah. On my own terms, the way I'm going to do it. Yeah. Because you're taking too long. And the the great thing about God is when we step out of line, he will discipline us because he is our father and he will discipline us and put us back on that narrow path. But we as humans want to do what we want to do. We have a flesh. Yeah. We're flesh and if you're born again, you're spirit. Yeah. So it's always a war. It and, is a war. And that's what I mean. Like being born again, is it's not easy. Following Christ is not easy. Christ picking up his cross was not easy. No. So what makes it think that if you're an actual believer and a disciple of Christ, that it's going to be easy? It's a misconception because it's not. Every day we have to assess our heart and we have to go against our flesh. Yeah, every single day. Yeah. And yes, it's not easy, but... We have the spirit of God and he gives us that peace Mm. because we know what he has spoken to us. Yeah. We know. And it's not that we come to him for the promises. No. No. Yeah. But we endure because we know that he gives us peace, that he is our source of joy. Yeah. That he is our source of life and love. Yeah. And that's what makes it easier to walk this Christian life. It's that it's not in my own strength. It's in yours and yep. you give me that strength. Yep. It's true. Like I wrote here on my on my notes when I was studying it, you know, um, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we are born again, we become anew. Mm. Now what anew means is to be positive. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit of power, love and a sound mind. Yeah. That's why it is positive. Um. And I had that revelation because a new means positive. And I was like, hang on a sec. If the Holy Spirit comes over us and we're more positive, that goes back to the scripture of, is it First Timothy? Where um, it says the spirit of the Lord is not of fear, but of power, love and yeah. a sound mind. Um, and yeah, it just, it just gave me that revelation because when I came to Christ, I have become a lot more positive. Like my mind is renewed because yeah. of the Holy Spirit. And the strength that I have is only through the Holy Spirit. The patience that I have is only through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So 
when when we receive Christ, it's not that our life will be perfect. It's that we have the strength through the Holy Spirit to endure through trials and tribulations. Yes. That's what that means. It's not that everything's all la di da now. No, you know, it's, no, that's definitely not. What it not. Is at all, it's that He is our strength. He is our joy. Yeah, like I have been so happy since giving my life to Christ. Yeah, that's not to say that I haven't had my days where I've been upset mm. or that it's hard when the Lord really wants to deal with your character and remove anything in you that's not of him Mm -hmm. because that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit works in you to become more Christ-like. Yep. And that means that you have to confront all the ugly things in your heart. Yep. You know, and it isn't easy to come to that, to that reality. Mm -hmm. When you live your whole life in deception, in feeding your flesh. Yep. In gratifying the flesh. That when these things are revealed to you and you make that conscious decision that I'm going to give my life to Christ and I'm going to allow him to take control and lead over my life mm. and he starts to work in you, it hurts. It does. But there is so much reward in that because you change. It's the refinement process. It's refinement. And refining is very, very hard. It's not an it's not an easy thing. Like sometimes a refinement process, like for me, my longest one I think was about a week and a bit, two weeks. Yeah, and I was like crying uncontrollably at night every, every time in worship or in prayer, and I was like seeking for healing. But what I didn't understand at the time was the Lord was healing me. It was I had to bring it up to Him. I had to. He had to. Like I would always pray. You know, whatever is in my heart that doesn't glorify you or that hinders my walk with you. Yeah. Make it known so I can, so you can deal with it. Reveal it to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I prayed that and of course he answered it because he does and it caused a lot of heartbreak in me but not a painful as in like I, I don't, I, you know, I don't like God. Not that type of pain. It was a pain of, okay, I need to, I need to deal with this if I want to grow with the Lord. I yeah. need to deal with this if this is what he needs me to deal with for my purpose for him on this earth. And refinement is a very um, – it's very tough. It is very tough but it is very worth it. Because when you get that breakthrough, when you come out of that and you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you're, it, it keeps building strength. It's like he moves you from glory to glory, right? Yeah. And there's no better feeling than that. Mm. And it's so that in these situations – that he may be glorified, Mm. that the glory comes back to him. Because he is the only one that that can do this. Mm. He takes us from the darkness and brings us to the light. Yeah. And that change, that change of heart when you are born again, it comes overnight and it's not something that I can do in my own strength. I can falsely believe that I've done that. Yeah, sure, that's cool. But the inclinations of my flesh will take over again, right? Yeah. And I'll be back to the same person. So we can't sit here and say that we done this on our own, Mm. that we changed on our own. Yep. We can't. We can't take the glory for that. We can't take the credit for that. It's all the Holy Spirit. Because it's impossible to have a change of heart on your own. You you can't do that. Not overnight. Like that's Mm. my – that was my exact experience when I came to Christ and when I surrendered to him. Now, people who knew me before Christ – knew me as someone who loved Cardi B. Yeah. I idolized Cardi B, Megan the Stallion. Yeah, so you could just imagine the type of person <laughs> that I was <laughs> before Christ, okay? This is before Christ, guys, yeah, okay? Or before Jesus. <laughs> um and I loved them. Like in the mornings when I would get ready for work, Cardi B was on repeat. That would hype me up for the day. Anyway, and then the night that I surrendered to Christ, etc, I went to bed. The next morning I woke up, I'm having my morning coffee, and I'll go to play Cardi B. I could not, something was so irritated in me. And at that time I didn't understand, but now I know it was the spirit. Yeah. And it it irritated me. I couldn't listen to it. I had to turn it off. And you couldn't come to that on your own, right? No. Exactly. Not at all. Yeah. And like I'd be scrolling through Instagram and the memes and stuff that I used to, you know, um, see and the pages I used to follow, my eyes just couldn't see it anymore. I was like, what's going on? And I I unfollowed all those pages (laughs) And I'm like, what is going on? And I didn't have any idea of what worship music was. So I go on YouTube and I'm like, oh, Christian worship music. Of course, Hillsong pops up. And so I start listening to Hillsong. And then I got into the Christian side of it. And I realized that when I listened to the, after receiving the spirit, 
and my change of heart overnight listening to worship music was like it was so edifying yeah because you're praising and worshiping the lord who created you and um that change of heart overnight was all glory to god because it is it because it is the power of the holy spirit amen but can i ask you a question yeah before receiving the spirit of god yeah what would your reaction be to listening to worship music? Because oh. <laughs> I know for me personally, I didn't want to hear it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is these people are crazy. You know, I never um, actually heard worship music before I came to Christ. Um, I would have seasons of revival, but without reformation. So I'd be on fire for God for like three days and then I'm back in my sin. Yeah. Um, it wasn't an actual born again experience of the spirit of God overcoming me. But if I had heard worship music while before Christ, I'd just be like, this is a bit weird. Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Seriously, you know? I had the same thought. Like, my sister, she was born again before me. <laughs> yeah. And every time she'd play worship music in the house or in the car, I'm like, this girl is crazy. <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> I actually thought she was crazy. You thought she was in a cult? I thought she was in a cult. I yeah. thought she was brainwashed. I'm like, oh my gosh. But now I realise mm. it's it's the it's the war that's happening. Yeah. I could not receive that because I was in my flesh. Yeah. And it's just like you look back and it's crazy because I would never have thought that I would be the person that I am today and all glory to God because Amen. I would never be able to get to this point without his spirit leading me. Amen. It's so true. Like if you told me, right, I don't know, a year and a bit ago that in a year from now you're going to be born again in love with Jesus, praying, worshipping, going to church, studying, reading your Bible and you're going to have kingdom friends and you're going to be preaching the gospel, I would have been like turned around and said, what drugs are you on? <laughs> that's not happening like I believe in Christ but that's not happening it's so true see how rebellious we are towards yeah. God and the things of God it is foolish to those that are not born again it really is and it was yeah it was so foolish to me we were exactly there yeah I'm like oh, okay cool I was baptized as a baby mm. I know Jesus yeah but it was more like Jesus was on the side kind of thing he yep. wasn't the he didn't have the throne of my heart yeah he wasn't the king of my heart. Mm. So when I would see the things of God, my spirit could not receive it because I was still in the flesh and I would laugh at it. Yep. And it is foolish to those. It is. Like I um I remember when I when I um first got uh saved, I surrendered to Christ, I became born again, the Holy Spirit came over me and I had this fear that like I just I really had this joy inside me first that I wanted to talk about Jesus. Like I love him so much, you know. I had this love for Christ that I had never had before. And I wanted to post about him, wanted to talk about him. <laughs> and I had this fear that was stopping me. Yeah. And at the time I didn't understand that, but I understand that it was the enemy not wanting me to break through that. Yeah. Because the enemy doesn't want anybody to know the truth. Yeah. Because that means that that is another soul saved and that soul is going to eternity with Christ. Yeah. And the devil doesn't want that. Um, and so I broke through that fear and I started posting about Jesus and the love of Christ and et cetera, you know, in, in the beginning of my walk. And people would inbox me on Instagram and they would say like, oh, I hope you're okay, you know, because you're posting all these things about Jesus and I hope you're okay, like I hope nothing's wrong. And I'm like, no, I'm actually great. I've found my saviour, like – I have the joy of the Lord. Yeah, like I'm I'm forgiven. Like it, this is joy that is indescribable. And I would think to myself, where were these people asking if I was okay when I was out drinking, partying every weekend yeah. and seeking validation and et cetera? And where was that then? And not to come against the people that yeah. messaged me, you know, they had good intentions. They literally thought something was wrong. But – People don't need to be asked if they're okay when they receive Christ. They need to be asked if they're okay and if they need help before Christ. Exactly. But society and the devil has twisted this world so badly that when you're out drinking and partying and doing all this, you're really, you're masking something, but society sees it as that's normal. 
You're living your life. It's culture, right? Yeah. It's she's young. She wants to go experience life. Let her yeah. drink, let her go out. I yeah. had the exact same experience when I first came to Christ. Yeah. But it's like, where were you when I was posting me going out? Exactly. Where were you when I was posting me getting drunk every weekend? Or coming home at sunrise every Saturday and Sunday. Exactly. And I'm not blaming those people, yeah. of course. But it is foolish. Mm. You know, like I would have done exactly the same thing if I didn't have the knowledge of God. Yeah. If someone was to come out and start posting about Jesus, I would I would inbox them. I'd be like, are you okay? Mm. But it's because I didn't understand. Yeah. And I had the exact same experience because I was so used to posting me going out, me partying, me drinking. Yeah. That it was overnight and I started posting about Jesus and people <laughs> were like, is this girl okay? Legit, it was overnight experience. Like, are you depressed? Do you need something? It's like, no, I was depressed before, but thank you for asking. <laughs> I <laughs> was depressed mean? before, but yeah, no, I'm good now. <laughs> like, I was masking my pain. Yeah. And I was trying to fill that void with things of this world and it didn't work because I was back doing the same thing. Yeah. It didn't fix anything. No, it was temporary. Exactly. It was a temporary fulfillment of joy and happiness and yeah. et cetera. And then you go to work that rest of the week and then the next week and you're doing it again. And that's why a lot of people live for the weekend, right? Yeah. But when you're in the Lord, every day is the weekend. And I live for the Lord. It's, I have the joy of the Lord. It's is beautiful. In my heart. It's amazing. Even when you're going through a trial, tribulation, or, or you, you've got to climb a mountain, you have that joy of the Lord and you rejoice in him. Amen. Because it's his love and the Holy Spirit that, that gives you the strength to endure. And it's nothing that when you're in the world and living separated from Christ that you can understand. You know, um, it's supernatural. It is supernatural. That's that the change word. of heart. Mm. That change of heart, it, it, you cannot explain it. Mm. It's a spiritual renewal and only the Holy Spirit can do that. Yeah. Only by receiving Christ, yep. glorifying Christ. And because when you do receive the Holy Spirit, when you do become born again and you receive Christ and you surrender, you do get the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit comes with gifts and fruit. Yeah. Right? Now you've got the seven fruits of the spirit. Yeah. Patience, kindness, self-control, gentleness, faithfulness. And there's another two guys. Um, <laughs> I should have written them down. But yeah. That would have been good. <laughs> good idea, that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, you've got the fruits of the spirit. And uh, I know before Christ, I was so impatient. Okay, I was that person beeping, swerving in and out of lanes, yelling at people on the road. If, if I was at the shopping centre and someone was walking slow in front of me, even though I had no rush to get to where I needed to be, I was like, oh my gosh, like if you want to stroll, go to the park. Like what are you doing in a shopping centre? Like I'm busy, you know, <laughs> and I'm really not busy. I just have to get to my car to go home and watch Netflix. <laughs> like I wasn't busy, but I was so impatient. And then overnight when I received Christ, I had that, that um, renewal. And one of the fruits is patience. And I had so much patience. The next morning I'm driving to work and I'm stuck behind a truck the whole time. And I was like listening to worship music. I'm like, who am I? And we, cannot, we, we can't do that on our own. No, it's nothing you can do on your own. It's all the Holy Spirit, glory to God. Because now the Lord tests me. Like, he will test you with, with patience, yeah. especially because I was a rager. Yeah. I was always angry. A little thing, I would blow up. So he wants to work on your character. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what he does. He does that by the, the power glory of, of the him. Spirit. Amen. He does that. Yeah. Now, a born again believer yep. understands that the wages for sin is death, right? Yep. So by nature, we are children of wrath. Mm. Even the Bible says that. And this is why it's also so important to be born again, right? Yeah. So in Ephesians 2, 3, Paul says, we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So this point, it makes it clear that our problem is not just in what we do, but in what we are. Mm. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. And that is the wrath of God coming upon sin. Yep. You know, and apart from a new birth, I am my problem. It's not my deeds. It's not my friends. It's not my parents. It's not my enemies. But I am my own problem. Yeah. Like he saved us from ourselves as well as eternal fire. Yeah, um, from yeah. ourselves because my human nature, it's self-centered, it's selfish, it's greedy. Mm -hmm. Nothing good comes from it. Mm -hmm. And that's all inclinations of the flesh, right? Yep. And it's nothing good comes from that. Nothing. 
that I can testify that this was my nature before I was born again. Yep. And if I was to remain in that very nature and not be born again, surely I would fall under the wrath of God because I was selfish. I was greedy. I was self-centered. I was stubborn. Yep. My heart was hard. Yep. Very hardened. It was like, yeah, I can totally testify to that too. So we need to come to an understanding that our nature is so rebellious and so selfish and so callous toward the majesty of God that his holy anger is a natural and right response to us. Yep. He is holy. He is just. He is perfect. Yep. And it's coming to that understanding that everything that I produce from my flesh yep. goes completely against him. Yep. And that's what he does not like. Yep. Like a lot of people probably listening to this, if they're not born again and et cetera, like I know me before um, before all, before Christ was the centre of my life and the king of my heart, um, I would, you know, I, I'm i just going to say that I grew up in a religion, all right? So I was relig- not religious, but I grew up in a religion. And when I came to Christ, I realised like it was – talking to him it was relationship and the the religious part didn't do nothing for me yeah and people can debate that and people can debate religion relationship etc but my story you can't debate that your testimony no one can debate that exactly you can debate the bible and these doctrines but you cannot debate someone's testimony and that is evidence of god working in someone that is evidence that god is real because of the change in somebody yeah the change of heart, the change of lifestyle, the change of how they talk, how they dress, how they act, how they treat people. Yeah. Because of the fruits of the spirit, that is evidence that God is real. People ask for evidence. That is your evidence. If you're not led by the spirit, you're not proof of God. Exactly. Like how can one day I be selfish and self-centered Yeah. and the next day be so selfless? Yeah. It can't just happen naturally. No. It is supernatural. It is a rebirth. It is receiving the spirit of God and that's why it's necessary to receive the spirit of God because we are selfish and we're self-centered and we can't do it on our own. No. And like you said, no one can argue your testimony because you know what you were and the person that you were before you came to Christ. Yep. And no one else can tell you otherwise. No. And I can acknowledge the fact that without him Mm. and before him, this is the person that I was. Yep, same. And I now having knowledge, full knowledge, I know now that I was under wrath. Yep, same. And that I was my own problem. That I would deceive myself to say that I am a good person when in reality I am not. And mm. we, can't, we can't measure our standard of good to God's standard of good. No, we can't do that. We can't do that because I have a, de- a different definition of what good is and you have a different definition of what good is, right? Yep. So who's right? Exactly. Are you right or am I right? Mm. Or are we just both wrong? We're both wrong. Exactly. I'm going to come out with the truth, guys, and I'm going to say we're both wrong because in the eyes of God, good is the Ten Commandments and no one could uphold them. Not one person except for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. So if – you have not or cannot uphold the Ten Commandments, you're not a good person. And that was hard for me to come to the realisation of before Christ. Yeah. Or actually, no, I was just saved and I realised I was reading the Ten Commandments. I started the at Genesis and Exodus and I was reading the Ten Commandments and I was like, actually, no, I have lied. No, I, I am an idolater. You know, I idolise my phone and I think everyone can relate to that. Yeah. We're so addicted to our phone and – um yeah when I was reading the 10 commandments I realized I'm I'm really not a good person am I No I'm not and it's such a hard fact to face because we think we're we're nice people so we must be good Exactly but being good is not getting you into heaven being good is not going to let you see the kingdom of God Jesus said unless one is born again or will receive the spirit he cannot and will not see the kingdom Yeah it's that simple we will not we will not see the kingdom. We will, yeah, we will not. And you know um, what else the Bible talks about mm. is that we love darkness and we hate light, right? Yeah. So in John three nineteen to 20, J- 
Jesus says, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed, right? Mm. So we are not neutral when spiritual light approaches us. We resist it. And we're not neutral when spiritual darkness approaches us. We envelop it. We become it. Yep. And I can, I can testify to that because I loved living in my sin. Yeah. And there's no denying it. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that I was a perfect person. Mm. Now having the full knowledge of God, I can sit here and openly testify to you that, that what Jesus was saying mm. was me. I loved the darkness and I hated the light. Yeah. Whenever my sister would try to speak to me about Jesus, I'd be like, oh my gosh, can you just stop talking? I didn't want to hear it. And why? Because her lightness, the light in her was exposed in the darkness in me. Yeah. And I did not want to come to that reality. Well, it's like when we were at church a couple um, a couple weeks ago and yeah. the pastor was saying, you do not realise the effects of sin on your life until the light of the gospel starts to shine in your heart. Yeah. And that has just stuck with me. Because that's exactly what happens. You do not realize that you are a bad person until the light of the gospel and the words of Christ start to come to you. Yeah. And slowly you start to realize like, what's this person saying? And that's the Holy Spirit starting to convict you. Convict you, yeah. So a lot of people don't understand that when we talk about Christ and the gospel and scriptures and educational stuff and we're preaching – we're preaching the truth out of love, but if you're feeling convicted, that's the Holy Spirit convicting someone. Yeah. It's not us coming for you. It's the Holy Spirit talking through someone. Yeah. Um, because the th- the great thing about God is he's always pursuing you. You know, when we look back on it, like I know I look back on my life and the Lord was always pursuing me. Yeah. But I was rebelling. I used to say to myself um, at night, yeah, I'll, I'll come to Christ, but i got heaps of time. Let me live my life. I'm in my 20s. Like, let me live my life and then I'll accept Christ. And then it got to a point where the Lord was like, mm-mm, you're coming, you're coming now, tonight. You're giving your life to me now. Yeah. And that was the conviction of, of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and that's when I surrendered. And, and that's through hearing the word. That's yeah. through reading the Bible. Yeah. That's through knowing God's character. Mm. And that's the Holy Spirit convicting. So the Bible does say that the word of God is powerful, it's active and it's living. Yeah. So the word will never return void. Yeah. You know, it's up to a person to make that conscious decision. Am I going to be obedient to the conviction of the Holy Spirit mm. or am I going to rebel against him? Yeah. And if you do not have the spirit of God, you will indulge in the darkness. Yeah. And that is the truth because that's who I was. That was my nature. Yep. That's what I enjoyed. I loved it. Yep. I thrived in it, but it was all false. So let me ask you a question. Um, you know, before Christ and you were living in your sin and how you just mentioned you indulged in it and, and you thrived in it, um, did it make you feel good? It was like a temporary fix. Mm. So I would get the temptation, I Mm. would sin, Mm. but then after that I would feel so condemned, I would feel so shamed, Yeah. but I didn't understand what I was feeling, so I'd do it again because it's like when I sinned and I committed that sin, I I got this like, this adrenaline, this really good feeling, it was cool and all, and then after that I would feel broken. And I didn't understand that this is what sin was doing to me, Mm. that this is what indulging in darkness was doing to me. And it was just, I'd done it and I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I didn't feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Like we all did. Yeah. Or if some are listening and they're not born again, um, like we all, you know, like you do. And it's not us coming to condemn that's not our job. That's the Lord's job. It's not even us coming to convict. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Yeah. It's us talking about our story, our testimony, our personal experience, 
and the glory of God. Yeah. Like I loved the darkness. Yeah, we so love what we should hate yep. and hate what should be loved. Yep. But when you're in the knowledge of the Lord, you start to hate what he hates. Yes. And you love what he loves. Yeah. Like I was always a very empathetic person. You know, I loved love. But then it got to a point with my story, which I, I won't mention on here because it's a bit early, but um, I started to hate love after an experience in my life. And I hated it. Yeah. I hated seeing couples. I hated love. I was like, get out of my face. You know, like I'm an in- independent woman. I'm, I'm a boss, you know, like yeah. I don't need any man, you know. And then I started to become a feminist. And we know modern feminism is very toxic. I can talk from experience. And I hated love, but I was still empathetic. But I started to suppress it. I was like, no, I'm, you know, I, all these emotions, like I'm not a sensitive person. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a savage. Like, oh my gosh. Anyway, um, and then I came to Christ. <laughs> okay, this is before Christ, guys. Yeah, yeah, that was all before Christ, okay? <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> um, and then I came to Christ and the heart that he gave me was more empathetic than ever. Like then ever. Guys, I'm not joking. When I tell you that I can see an old man at a shopping center having a coffee by himself and I want to cry. Now, I don't know if that's empath or what. But this is true. I've seen her do this before. We were at Starbucks yesterday. Yeah. And there was a little old man. He was probably in mid to late 80s. Yeah. <sighs> And he like was struggling to open the door and in my head I'm like, do I need to get up and hold it for him? He was with someone else. But anyway, he walked in and Esperance and a friend that we were with were in conversation and I was zoned out of this whole conversation because I'm, I'm looking at this old man and I'm like, my heart is just like overwhelmed for him and I have no idea what's going on. And anyway, like I zoned back into the conversation and then they went quiet because they finished the conversation. And I said to you, I was like... <laughs> There's this little old man that walked into the, into the into the cafe and like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Like my heart, I just want to cry. Guys, she's she's actually gonna cry while she's telling you this story. I really <laughs> am. I need to stop talking about it. But <laughs> <laughs> would you have done that before Christ? No, no. I like I felt for old people, but now it's a completely different empathetic love of my heart. Yeah, and that's because the love of Christ. Yeah, I see people the way that Christ sees them. Because the way that Christ looks at me, he looks at someone who still doesn't know him. Yeah. He didn't die for people who will believe in him. He died for... for he died for all. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. She just hit her microphone. <laughs> I need to stop talking with my hands. Um, it's that Balkan... That wog <laughs> thing. I do hey? it too, don't worry. Um, but yeah, he died for all. He didn't just die for people. He died for people who will reject him forever, who will choose to be in eternal chains. He still died for you. He died for everyone. And that's why like my heart when I came to Christ was renewed like that. He changed it. You know, you think of the times where you've rebelled against him and you've done so much wrong to him. And even when you've done so much wrong to him and rebelled against him, Mm. he still died for you on that cross. It doesn't change his love for you. It does not change his love for you. That's right. When you look at people now, because you're in Christ, do you have a different feeling in your heart? I just have such a deep love for them. Yeah. Like a love that I I never understood before. Yeah. And I was very much like you in the sense where I was a cold person. Yeah. Where my heart was cold. Mm. Where I had no love. Where I didn't know how to love. And if I loved, it was selfish love. Yeah. It was what could I get? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. But now I look at people and there's this love that flows through me and now I understand that that is the heart of God, that he is helping me to see these people the way that he sees them, Mm -hmm. that he is helping me to love these people the way that he loves them. Yep. And it's that whole moving in compassion, speaking in compassion. Yep. Like I know um, I'll just look at people now and I'm like, I want like do you – in my heart and in my head I'm like – do they know the love of Christ? Do they understand how loved they really are? Like no matter what you have done, I don't care what you've done. Paul, before he was Paul, was persecuting Christians. Yeah. And then he had he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and he started preaching the gospel. And God used him in such a big way that he preached the gospel not just to the Jews but to the Gentiles. Yeah. And the Gentiles being those of us who are not Jewish, right? Um. And that is how, 
Like God doesn't look at what you have done. He looks at your heart and when you come to him, he is like, okay, what you've done in your past is all, it's all paid for. Christ paid all of that by his blood because you have accepted him as Lord. Yeah, He has paid all that. You're clean to me now. I'm going to use you. And we always think that we are unqualified for what he's going to use us for. Just because we're born again and we're, we follow Christ does not mean that we walk in this pride and confidence. No. It's not prideful. It's not boastful. Yeah. Because we think we're not qualified. Like even with this podcast, we have had moments where we're like, you know what? We're, we're not ready for this. I know me personally. Like yeah. I would, I'm not ready. What do, you, what do you mean I have to talk about you? Like I'd say it to the Lord, you know, like I'm not ready for this. But in his time, you're ready. Yeah. He qualifies us. Yeah. And, and that's the whole breaking down the pride, right? Yeah. And that comes from the heart. We yeah. can't walk in pride. We walk in humbleness and we need to be reminded that, hold on, wait, no, it's not about me and my knowledge and my glory. It's about him and his glory. Amen. And drawing people to him. Yeah. He is the center. He is the foundation. He is the head. He is the center of it all. Yep. And it's all for his glory. And just touching on the fact that we were cold, our love was cold and it was selfish love yep. before Christ, before he changed that in us, that is another very important reason as to why we need to be born again. Yeah. So the Bible, as I mentioned earlier, our hearts are hard like stone, right? So in Ezekiel 36, 26, God says, I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll just touch on it again. A heart of flesh is a heart that is sensitive to the Lord and responsive to his word, right? Mm -hmm. In Ephesians 4, 18, Paul traces our condition back through darkness to alienation, to ignorance, to hardness of the heart, right? Mm. He says in that scripture, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. Mm. Our problem is not ignorance. Our ignorance is guilty ignorance, right? Yeah. It is rooted in hard and resistant hearts. And Paul also says in Romans 1.18 that we suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Mm. So our hearts were so hardened. Yep. And we would justify that. We would justify the hardness of our hearts. Like you said earlier, how hard was your heart? Yeah. Even though I didn't think it was, you know, even though I would, um, you know, I, I'd love people, but I'd only love people who loved me. I'd only respect people who respected me and I'd only care for people who cared for me. If you had hurt me, you didn't want to get on that side of me. Yeah. That was the type of person I was. Um, and I had hurt a lot of people in my past because of who I was. And that was because my love was cold yep. against people who hurt me. That was your heart of stone. Yep. And it's only until the spirit of the Lord came over me and came upon me that um, I could love people who hurt me and I pray for people who I have hurt. And that is a love that is supernatural. It's not a love that you can get on your own. Yeah. It is a love given to you freely by the Lord and you give freely to others. Yeah. Because before him, mm-mm. But not just towards other people. Like, yes, towards other people, I was very cold. But even towards God, I was very resistant and rebellious. Yeah. And that's because I had a heart of stone. Mm. And it's not until he removed that heart of stone and created in me a heart of flesh yeah. that I was able to be obedient to his word and his teachings and not be resistant towards him. Yeah. Yeah, because it always starts at your heart. It's all a heart issue. It always starts will with be. The heart. Always will be. And even the Christian walk, it's a daily assessing of your heart. Yep. Like you said earlier, it's like, Lord, reveal in my heart anything that is not of you. Yeah. Bring it to the surface. Help me deal with it. Mm. And it's it's walking in humbleness. It's not pointing the fingers at other people when they do wrong to you. It's Stepping back and saying, okay, Lord, what did I do to them? Yeah. 
why are they acting like this, Lord? Reveal in me anything that is not of you, Lord. Yeah. Let me deal with that first. Yeah. It's dealing with yourself. Yeah. Before you can deal with something that someone has done to you or you've done to someone else. Yeah, 100%. Um, you cannot deal with something that has happened to you unless you have dealt with how you feel about it and you have allowed the Lord to heal that in you. Yeah. And the thing with, the, with God is he's quick to forgive. He's very quick to forgive. But sometimes we don't understand that we need to speak it. We need to say, Lord, this is what I've done and I'm really sorry. It's a repentant heart. Yeah. That is the key. We can easily say, I'm sorry, and then we go about our about our business, about what we want to do. Yeah. That is not receiving the Holy Spirit. That is not being born again. You need to have a repentant heart. Do you really hate what you do? Yeah. That goes against Christ. Do you really hate what put him on that cross? Because if you do and you accept and you and you speak it to him, forgiveness comes like that. It comes so quickly. It comes so easily. But yes, your heart has to be in the right posture with God. Yeah. You cannot hide anything from God. He knows everything. Yep. He knows your heart more than you know your own heart. Yep. Because we will never get to the full depth and the full knowledge of what is truly in our heart. And if our salvation depended on having full knowledge of our sin yep. and full knowledge of the inner depths of our heart, then we would all be under wrath. Yep. That is the Holy Spirit reveals that in you. And that's walking in the Lord. Mm. That's walking in the light. Mm. Like I can say for me personally, before the Lord removed my heart of stone and created in me a heart of flesh... If someone was to do wrong by me or do wrong to me, I wouldn't assess myself. I wouldn't check my heart. Yep. I would blame them. 100%. I would say they done this, they done that. But I was never really looking at my own heart. I was never really looking at where I was coming from or how I was coming across to them. Yep. Or what was in me that was that that caused that. Yep. It was always playing the blame game. Yep. It was always blaming them. Oh, but they did this. We justify it. Yeah. We justify their wrong. But we're yeah. so quick to judge them. And I'm not saying that we bring judgment upon ourselves. No. Yeah. We check our hearts and we assess our hearts. Yeah. And that is the daily walk as a Christian. Yeah. It's checking your heart. It's assessing your heart. Yeah. It all starts with you and your heart before the Lord. Yeah. It's always that. It will always be that. Um, and just like you mentioned before, before Christ, um, if someone had wronged you, it was a blame game. Yeah. We'd never think that we were wrong. It's like, you know, I'm right. I know what I'm doing. I know what I said. Like if you're offended and you, you want to yell at me, like how dare you? Do you know who I am? Like who did I think I was? <laughs> Do you know who I am? That's, that's who I was. I know, me too. And that's why now it's like all glory to God because I am nowhere near that person. And that's how I know I have grown with Christ and I have grown spiritually. But the first thing that before Christ, like you mentioned, when someone had wronged you, the first thing that would come over me was anger. Yeah. I was so angry. I was ready to rage. It would take over, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I would get to a point of rage where I scared myself. Like, I probably shouldn't say that because you guys really don't know me that well yet. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all before Christ, okay? Um, <laughs> but th that's how scary my rage got. And now I cannot picture myself even getting angry, let alone to a point of rage where I scare myself. That's not in me anymore. Yeah, I get irritated, but then the spirit of the Lord is like, calm down. And I'm like, you're right. I, he wants I will. to deal with that irritation yeah. in you. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I will. Okay. You know, yep. No worries. Like what you say goes. Yeah. But so, see, that's you checking yourself. That's you assessing your heart. I always do now. Yeah. Because it always starts with me. I can't show someone the love of Christ if I haven't assessed my heart before him. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Because it's out of humbleness that we show love that we have given, uh, that we have received from that him. That we have received. That we give out. Yeah. And it's his love that regenerates us. He changes us. Yeah. And, yeah. And before being born again, we are not able to come to Christ and embrace him as Lord. Yeah, no. You... We can't. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Yep. And what Paul is saying there, like I could go off and say that Jesus is Lord before mm. I was born again in the Spirit, but did I really mean it? Mm. Did I really 
enjoy or boast in the fact that Jesus has lordship over my life? No. Yeah. You know why? Because I wanted full control of my life. Yep. I wanted to do things my way. Yep. So to say that Jesus is Lord in the flesh, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. But to say Jesus is Lord with the Holy Spirit, that's where you truly mean it. It's edifying in a way. Yeah. Um, You know, when I say Jesus is Lord and I say it through the Spirit, it's like, it's, I can't explain it. I don't know if you feel the same, but that's, I just, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Overall. Jesus is the love of my life. He yeah. is the first and the last love. Yep. And I can fully testify to everyone right now that I would not have been able to say that in the flesh. Yep, same. I would not have been able to acknowledge that fact mm. in the flesh. Mm-hmm. And you know why? Because it is impossible for the dead, dark, hard, resistant heart to celebrate the lordship of Jesus over their life without being born again. Yeah. And that's the honest truth. Yeah. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people like probably think like, how do you become born again? Like, how do I, do, how do I become born again? I know from experience, the key is a repentant heart. Yeah. That, that is it for me, a repentant heart, because that's what the Lord looks at. If you really have a repentant heart and you really want to change, the Lord will change you because you're seeking it. Yeah. Seek and you shall find. You have to have a repentant heart. You have to really want to change. You have to really hate your sin. You have to really want to turn from your old ways and glorify God. Yeah. And for a lot of people, that happens when you're down in the dirt, when you've hit rock bottom and you don't see a way out. Yeah. A lot of people start praying even though they don't even believe in a God to pray to. And that's when they have an encounter or a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's coming to the knowledge that I cannot do this life in my own strength. Yeah. I cannot live this life in my own strength. Yeah. And it's not saying that I want you, Jesus. It's saying that I need you, Jesus. Need. I need you every single day of my life. From morning to night, every single hour, every single second, every single day Mm. for the rest of my life, Mm. I need you. It's not a want. It's not I put him on the side and I call on him when I need him yep. or when I want him yep. or when I want that promotion at work yep. or when I want that job or when I want that car or I want that house or I want that relationship. No, yep. it's he comes first and everything else comes second. Yep. Amen. So I just want to ask you a question, Steph. Sure. So tell me, after you were born again and received the spirit, what has changed in you? What happens to you after you're born again? You're a lot more calm. You're at peace. You have a love in your heart. You have a supernatural joy that you want to share with others. Um, You have a changed mind. The way that you think about yourself and think about people is very different. But it's the biggest thing that has changed in me is the way that I speak. Before Christ, I used to be very, um, I'd swear, all the time. Being Australian, the C word was a very big thing here. It still is, but for me, it was very big. And I would throw that word, word around like confetti. Yeah. That is what used to come out of my mouth. That's how I used to talk. And I personally, I just cannot. My tongue tames anytime I want to. I don't even want to say it. But if it comes out accidentally, I feel this like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, God. Yeah. You know, um, that is the biggest thing that has changed for me. And that's the transformation of the Holy Spirit, right? And it was overnight. Yeah. And he changes you. Yeah. That, that is what happens after you were born again. You are being transformed into the image of Christ. Yeah. You are becoming more and more like him. And that's why I think people like um, that knew us but don't know us in Christ, probably if they are listening, you know, hi, how are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, they're probably like, who, who is this Steph? I didn't know this Steph. Who is this Esperance? This is not the Esperance I knew. You're a new creation in Christ. And that's what brings us back to the glory of God. It's he done all it. him. It is not us. And you know that because you knew the old us. Yeah. Um, and it's not just the transformation. It's also the fact that I have no desire to live for this world anymore. 
Yeah. So everything that I do now, I do for the glory of the Lord. Yep. Whereas before, I was doing everything for my own glory. Mm. Like you said before, how many likes did I get on Instagram? Mm. Why did this person unfollow me? Mm. But it's like now, no, I live for the kingdom. Yep. I walk in his kingdom. I show people who Christ is by the way that I love them. Yep. And it's I have no desire to gratify the pleasures of the flesh. Yeah. I'm not saying that it doesn't want to, you know, pop up. It, it does. Up. It does. It does because that's the whole war that wages against the spirit, the yeah. flesh and the spirit. Yeah. But my desire, my one and only desire is to know Jesus, is to walk with Jesus, is to know have full knowledge of him and it's make chasing him, known. him. Yeah. yeah. Chasing him and his kingdom. Nothing of this world satisfies. Like yeah, I, I completely agree. And I'm going to throw in this part before Christ's success to me was what career I had, how much money I had, getting married, having kids, having that beautiful house and that, that family yep. life, right? You know what success is to me now? What is it? Getting to heaven and hearing well done, good and faithful servant. You know what? I can't wait to hear those words. That is it. That is it. I do not care about this world because it's burning in flames anyway if you, yep. if you haven't realised and took, taken a look around you. Um but our soul lives for eternity. Amen. And if you have heard the gospel and you deny it, you have a choice, right? We all have free will. If you don't want to accept Christ, you don't have to. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. It means you choose not to love him. Yeah. And we all have a choice. So you either choose eternal chains and burning in fire or you choose Christ and living for eternity. It's that simple. It's and really what, simple. what choice are you going to make? Yeah. You know? But yeah, you know, it says to set your heart on things above. And that's exactly what happens when we come to Christ. That's exactly what happens when we're born again. Yeah. We don't want anything in this world. And like you, I set my things on things of this world, mm. my career. Yeah. What house I was going to buy. Yeah. How many properties would I have in my portfolio? Yeah. That's, that's what my mind was set on. Mm. But now... I don't have a desire for any of those things. Yes, it's a, it's essential to have a job, but your career and your calling are two very different things. Very different. It's very different things and I will choose walking in my purpose and living for his kingdom yep. than anything else. That was, yeah, like before Christ, I didn't know what my purpose was. I had a job and I still have the business and that and – um. But I knew I, – I, I had a feeling I was destined for more. I just didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was until I was saved and a few things happened um, and I enrolled into college. And before that, when I would enroll into college, it just never worked out. I was either sick on the day of the interview or I waited too late and enrolments were finished. Yeah. And the Lord knew that it would only work when I had come to him. And now I'm enrolled in college and that worked out straight away. They accepted me straight away. It wasn't – I didn't have to wait. And, um, yeah, it – And you've been getting 100% in all your assessments. In everything. And that's how you know it's confirmation that this is from the Lord, this is your purpose, it's that what you're I'm walking meant to in do. your purpose. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's edifying. And that's your desire. You know what? It is. And that's your desire yeah. because it's not things of this world, it's things of the kingdom. Yeah. And I just want to also add mm. that after being born again, you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. It's like I can accidentally slip out a swear word and I'll be like, oh my gosh, Lord, I am so sorry. Whereas before, I didn't care. I didn't care. I used to be like, this is how I talk. If you don't like it, you can leave. Yeah. You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to listen to me. Yuck. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like having the Holy Spirit, you walk in complete obedience and submission to the Lord. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's obedience. And it's hard. It's, um, it's hard to be obedient, especially naturally if you weren't an obedient person. Yeah. I wasn't. And I'm still learning that, guys. Um, <laughs> I think I will be learning that for a while. It's a learning process. So thanks for tuning in, guys, to our second episode of the Prodigals podcast and our topic of being born again. Um, next next episode will be about Christ crucified and the gospel, um, Christ from beginning to end. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye.
We want to thank you for listening to another episode of The Prodigals. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in. If you've enjoyed what you've listened to today, feel free to share it and check out the link in our bio to keep up to date and for more content. Blessings to you from Steph and Esperance.